Yes. Okay. okay. Now it's okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, can you just um, share my frustration with your yeah. freedom? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. So just bring a bit the, the context. So the topic is about. So the topic is the what what constitutes trends on social social channels, and specifically since when and why do we have to cater so much to the algorithm when we wanna um, discuss certain topic or create content for that matter? And what made me kind of frustrated uh, thinking about that is that for whatever reason, the algorithm uh, favors, in my opinion, content that is predominantly for entertainment. But the other type of content that I personally find more valuable, the one that you actually go deeper into the subject and you have a meaningful exchange with, mm -hmm. with people, um, it's never a trend. I've never seen three three likes of a post and a deep discussion with certain comments to be certified as a trend. In uh, specifically, I'm talking about LinkedIn, yes. and I wonder why. What is it that this uh, this behavior is trying to instigate in all of us that we need to slide through the surface in order to to gain traction? Is this is this the direction? And uh, yeah. Uh, this made me actually not look at LinkedIn for a whole week. I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really disappointed. And uh, yeah, I thought, why? Why is this a trend? Uh, why is algorithm only counting likes and then call it a trend? Um, if it means if the if the content is really poor or like superficial, nevertheless. Yes. You, I don't you know. Had you had a specific example, right? I, I, yeah, I did have a specific example of a post that contained literally five or oh, five words in a sentence mm. that was considered transformational, <laughs> provocative, life-changing. I, I kept reading the comments and I was like, maybe, maybe. I just don't know what are they seeing that I'm not seeing. And uh, <laughs> if you give me a second, I can actually even read the <laughs> the the life changing a quote that uh, <laughs> uh, yeah bothered me so much but I just think that it's nice but certainly I, I, I wouldn't classify that as a trend of any kind so I don't know what is your experience ah yes at, here, it, here it goes worrying is a terrible misuse of imagination so this was the this was the statement that a certain person and I don't want to say who posted <laughs> Which became transformational, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so a this big, was a, a trend. Big trend. It, yes, it created seven hundred and forty-two likes. Yeah, and it had twenty plus comments that people shared, and that's where I found how they saw the profound nature <laughs> of this uh, this sentence. I'm not saying that uh, there is anything, anything wrong with that. I uh, also liked the the so-called. Uh, um, let's say funny or intriguing uh, engagement with the audience, but I really question: Is this a trend? And yeah, where are we where are we going with this trend? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that. Those are really good questions. Well, well, my experience with the, with algorithms in, in social media, but but spe specifically in, in LinkedIn, which. I feel like it's a bit different from other type of social media. It's like really work or business related type of uh, thing. And um, well, yeah, I agree with you that there's a lot of things that are, you know, pr uh, promoted to you. Uh, that are superficial. Um, yeah, sometimes it's just uh, someone who shared a, a, a video of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. making um, a funny, you know, metaphor about, uh, you know, 
uh, something, a topic, work-related topic with a picture of kids or a picture of cats or a picture of whatever, which seems to be most often the more and more often the case uh, right now on LinkedIn uh, recently than in the past. Uh, the use of this kind of meme type of um, content. Well, but I, I think like it, it is it is working as as many many other type of algorithms that try to to look at yeah trends are not defined by uh trends are not defined by the by the interaction they are defining the type of interaction that the the social uh, platform allows you to to have this is my feeling it's, it's not it's not like there's some type of interaction and suddenly the the algorithms just you know understand that these interactions are meaningful and then said okay now it's a trend Let's define it as a trend, but it's the opposite. They predefine it, predefine what is a trend, and this drive, this drives the the type of interaction you can have in the in the platform. And my feeling is that they said, okay, they, they have to put some proxy metrics to say there is something happening somewhere, and they are indeed, as you said, they are really superficial. So it's like the number of views, the number of clicks the number of likes and the number of comments. And so as soon as you have someone who understands the basics of the principle, it, you just have to, put, you know, to publish something that is uh, opinionated or divisive or something that creates, emo you, know, you know, strong emotional response that, that is not so costly for the users to reply to. You know, if you share something really meaningful, Something complex in you know in the thoughts or uh, in the the the, um, the ideas you want to you, you try to communicate it will requires the users to take more efforts to reply to this kind of you know uh, triggers. But if it's yeah. something really superficial but really you know uh, which drives strong response and easy to perform, then you are sure that with this type mm -hmm. of metrics it will create you know. Trends yeah. that are really superficial, uh -huh. and I, I feel like the the, the because it, it defines how the interaction should be measured. Therefore, you have what you see. You 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 cannot expect anything else. But my feeling is that if they if they had to do it differently, uh, this this is funny because we, we had this discussion with uh, I had this discussion with someone else that is trying to create uh, some kind of social network for designers and you know and UX designers. And they say he said he said well I, I try to create something like LinkedIn, but more in the conversation, more on oriented towards uh, you know discussion. And you cannot you cannot present things and you cannot measure things in the same way if you want to do it more conversational. Conversational that if you do it like for the show off, that is uh, something that like, like uh, you know LinkedIn. You want to on LinkedIn people are just. Uh, you know, self-branding, the, they are branding them, themselves and they have to be visible for that, for for something really specific they, they have to be known for. And yeah, yeah this is a fame. That, uh, indeed, I, I worry, actually, what made me stop and think about this whole algorithm and what type of content is considered a trend, the one that's thought-provoking or the one for entertainment, I'm thinking, but there are designers behind, those that made this selection and constructed whatever the criteria uh, mm -hmm. that constitute that. So can't they do better? Is, this, <laughs> is the likes that really matter? Because we make fun about Facebook uh, not long ago, about the clicks and the yes. dis disablement of the number of likes because it was like uh, affecting people's uh, self-esteem and uh, emotional well-being and etc. But how is LinkedIn... Uh, how is LinkedIn coming at par with this idea that this was the the so-called the not the serious network, but network where you would actually go and learn and enrich your understanding about the business and etc. And just to give a, a different example, I think two weeks ago, so I happened to participate in a, a exchange one debate on LinkedIn of a person who was genuinely interested of how to overcome the brainstorming difficulty where you have to come up with really good insights in a very short period of time and what would be the tools. 
and and a lot of people contributed and a lot of people share different approaches the uh, octopus method and also chip in to say what we do and it became a really lovely uh, uh, lively conversation and i learned mm-hmm. something i actually learned a lot from it but no one it, it went unnoticed unless you follow certain people you basically don't get exposed to this because i'm sure it didn't show up in many people's feeds and and this was a variable exchange so i'm um, i'm wondering uh we we spend so much time thinking about how to promote our work or um, what we do or what we care about mm-hmm. and we we go into the effort of sharing in these platforms interesting stuff but if the algorithm goes and prioritizes certain type of content, so basically what you are uh, what you're contributing to has no chance to see the light of day. It, yeah. it, it becomes this black <clears throat> hole that again, no different than Facebook, favors likes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it that's, made me sad. That's true. It made me sad because I do miss this thought provocative content. Uh, and I'm feeling more and more that LinkedIn stop being the place for whatever reason. Uh, I was actually thinking to run a survey, but I didn't have a chance uh, to, to ask people where do they go for a thought-provoking content these days? Is it still yeah. LinkedIn or is it another platform <clears throat> that is uh, fulfilling that niche? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel like, yeah. Uh, isn't it true that uh, anyway you, you couldn't make it visible for people that are external to this conversation anyway? No, but the thing is that they ask you for your interest. They know for sure what type of, uh, based on the hashtags, what type of content I actually usually like, where I go. For sure, this statistic, if you correlate, the people that care about, let's say, design or uh, design thinking or experimentation may would have been interested in this conversation due to the hashtags. But mm-hmm. I'm almost 100% sure um, it was not the case. But anyway, it's uh, it's my experience. And uh, yeah, I uh, it made me stop and think, why am I even creating content if if this is the the nature of the game, go for entertainment. I'm not really sure I want to be part of that. Not not to this extent. At yeah. Least. Yeah. Well, I feel like also the well, there's a difference between Facebook and LinkedIn in the sense that the the, the reason why people are in the platform and the type of discussion you can have on this platform is by nature a bit, or at least by definition, a difference from the, you know, from the, the, the ground up. But so already from the beginning, it's, it's the, the type of things you can see and the type of, uh, I mean, the type of thing that the, the, the algorithm will, you know, bring, uh, will promote as a trend or not will be really different. I never really seen like big discussion around vaccines, for instance, or around, you know, political topics on, on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm sure it exists, but, uh, but I never really saw something like, as you can see sometimes on, on Facebook, or well, and and I think the the problem with Facebook is that it, it brings in, in the front of many people a lot of paid content, you know, promotional content that mm-hmm. are here just for advertisement purposes, which may be the case that in LinkedIn they are a bit more disguised as you know um, opinions or personal thing like a discussion, more like a discussion. That's maybe the case, but I don't feel like it is as strongly oriented towards advertisement that is uh, Facebook, for instance. But yeah, I, I agree with you that the more you, the more there's people, there are people on LinkedIn sharing about the same type of content, and the more type of the same, the more of the same content you 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 will have, and and therefore. 
Um, yeah, and, and therefore you, you necessarily, you know, reduce the type of content that can be thought for provoking, you know? Uh, but I, I'm sure it's possible. Uh, it's like, you know, in, on LinkedIn, you have those groups, those groups uh, that you can create. You can create a community yes. on LinkedIn, a group, but they are hidden. So for some reason, they decided that what happens in the group stays in the group. So for instance, if there's something, if there's a really deep conversation on one post in one group, uh, they will be, it will be not, not visible, not promoted to anyone else that is looking for this type of content, but is not part of the group. In the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe that's a, you know, a missed opportunity. I don't know if it's the, if it's, there's probably, there are probably good reasons for that, but you know, yeah. yeah, I also came across, uh, actually, a lot of people seem to care and, and worry about this algorithm because I did some reading and research and I saw quite a few good articles on Medium talking about how if you are a creative, you actually have to find a different, almost a parallel avenue to still keep your creativity because the minute you have to cater about CEO, uh, the, the right hashtags, the type of content that you know would generate the likes, it almost puts you in a very constrained box. Therefore, you are, uh, yeah, you are, if anything, but not creative. So, um, yeah. Yes, that's true. But I, I, yeah, I don't know how they could, you know, with the type of, I mean, the algorithm is, is created for the type of, Again, the algorithm is designed based on the type of interaction that was pre already predefined. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know of mm -hmm. any type of platform that allows, as we have not right now, uh, you know, more lively conversations. Well, the question is the notion of the trend. Why the likes has to constitute trend. They could have simply highlighted certain posts based on the hashtags that I like or I follow, and I would have been totally fine. But to call a trend simply a, a one single sentence of what somebody is posting, I, I, I think it's a little too much. So perhaps it's not so over, uh, how to say, over stretching the existing uh, algorithm capabilities to make uh, certain tweaks to. to to um, at least tone it down so that people uh, don't mm -hmm. feel uh, don't feel they have to follow this direction. If they if I want 750 likes, now I know what I need to do. I need to come up with something positive psychology upbeat with a cool image, <laughs> and that there you go. But <laughs> is this the way? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I really wonder. So um, I, I think it's not necessary to have a revolution. We're not asking for a uh, AI to be able to fully follow the conversation, but at least to be mindful of what does what is the message that such uh, such action is uh, sending to the to the participants. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this is already a major step. Could be. Yeah, yeah. Well, if if, if we can imagine that um, we we change the rules of the game. Let's say we change the rule of the game. Currently, the the main way for an algorithm to say that something is inter interests people are likes, and the reason likes works is because the I mean, the reason for the algorithm to look for likes that we already predefined that likes are the way for people to say that they are interested in into something. So it's already a limited way to express some uh, you know interests that is measured as a limited it is limited way to measure interest of people in a larger scale. It's but so, very, very simplistic. It's the most yes. simple thing that you can possibly do. <laughs> Measure life and there you go. Yeah, of course. A trend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So I, I don't know how we could drive around those ideas of, I, I'm thinking about, um, you know, something around complexity and uh, this idea of strange attractors, you know. Yeah. You, 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 you have a space and you have like, some elements of interaction and um you see how people navigate between these elements those elements and what drives the most uh interaction yeah, it could be in measured. the system and and this could be measured and this could probably be 
you know, without any likes and stuff like that, a good way to say this is a trend because people are looking for that. Now, now what the platforms want to do is that they want to categorize the type of interests people have. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is for selling behind, uh, behind the hood. They want to sell. Yeah. Uh, they want to extract metrics to say, okay, we on the platform, in average, on average, people are looking for this type of content and blah, blah, blah. And they want to use this kind of reports to sell uh, advertisement uh, placements uh, to, 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 to businesses. But so I and so really... that's that's the reason of the likes and the views mm -hmm. and the comment system tracking. You know, I was going uh, to say I, I really admire the way YouTube is handling the the matter because almost whenever I go to just browse and look, they usually surprise me with very interesting content that I would have not thought of. But somehow the the variety of the content that I'm exposed to. It's actually better than LinkedIn, I must say. I am uh, lately I'm discovering quite a, yeah diverse sources that are not necessarily what I would be looking for. But nevertheless, it makes me really appreciate uh, the the diversity and the options I'm given uh, if I wanna if yeah. I wanna check it out. But yeah, that, that's I mean, true. Well, YouTube has a different type of uh, problems. Uh, that's a of different course, type of, of problem. But I agree with you that in terms uh, of in terms of recommendation, they 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 are they are good, but they are doing what we what you just uh, mentioned before. They are they have algorithms that are crawling the entire video, tracking you know keywords that were used in the in in the video and m try to match it with the other other type of content they have in the platform. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it it questions the um, it questions the the ethical you know it's an ethical dilemma is it as you if you want to do it you you need for the algorithm to be to be able to understand the content in fact to be you know to to be um, uh, how what is the name to be pertinent in the yeah. term of uh, Yeah. So, yes, I can. Yeah, uh, yes, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you you were just <laughs> because maybe you will be interested. Yes. yes. Okay. Sorry. That's the that's the ring. I, I'll okay. be back. One second. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Done. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No worries. We can cut it in the, you know, in the post production. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, but, um, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe what, what you would have to do, but, but, but then you, you rely more on the people to do it is like having a, a more ethical way to let people categorize themselves what interests them in the content they saw. But then, as it is more demanding as a way to understand why people are, con you know, at are being attracted to the type of content you they are watching, then uh, it will re reduce the, the response you will get and probably you will lose some, you know, that's the, um, the complexity noise issue in the system. Um, and uh, I guess it's uh, it's why they are not doing it. Um, but 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 you know I'm interested. Recently, I'm reading about you know narrative research, mm -hmm. and this is typically one of the contexts in which I feel like the, it applies really well. And one of the thing that is really interesting is uh, from. Uh, one of the person that worked with Dave Snowden to mm -hmm. create the SenseMaker software. Yeah. They, they, they create this triad, a way to recall, to, to gather information about the participants. And uh, which is really interesting is that they, you, you can measure on a triangle with three different axes mm -hmm. from the same question, like uh, um, uh, what, what do you think of this, uh, of this topic? And you have 
three answer three positive but different answers and people have to to place uh, on the um, on the triangle so it's really like it creates a, um, a more dy dynamical way to reply and then if they want this could be just one prompt and then if they want they can add a comment they can add a story like uh, i was really interested because it helped me understand something about whatever the topic is and and then behind that the 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 algorithm could use this data as a as a more organic way to understand why people are attracting attracted to this type of content and then propose relevant uh, uh, trends based on stories not on likes which could be really 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 interesting to do yes. um but but i guess it will have to they will have to change the logic and then i don't know how much it would impact their business model because yeah well i, I don't i don't i don't see right now how it could you know uh hinder the business model around uh because there isn't, there isn't so much well there is a promoted uh, promoted content, but it's not really as drastic as other platforms. Yes, um, yes, I, I, I saw sometimes, I see some type of uh, content that is promoted, but it's so less invasive than yeah, indeed, this was uh, the Facebook or, um, or <laughs> Twitter. Sometimes you, 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 you just open the profile of someone, you have the first tweets of the guy, and then next to it, you have a promotional content that is twice bigger than the first tweet with a video and stuff interacting with. And it's just, I, I, well, I, most of the time I just scroll the faster I can to the next, yeah, you course. know, in, real interesting you, piece of content. <laughs> what you are saying is actually quite interesting to, to think if you have to design for stories, yes. even though they do claim that, I mean, everyone talks, how important storytelling is and yes. there isn't a company that would tell you, oh, we are not storytellers, we are <laughs> we just like data, but at the end of the day, the actions are very disconnected. So the That's actions true. are not where, where yeah. the story is for sure, because yeah. they missed, they certainly missed on that story. It was, a, it was an exchange during a whole weekend that people contributed to this guy question, trying yeah. to, to help. Uh, yeah, yeah, just 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 imagine if you use the comments on this post you are mentioning as a way to gather stories, and then just from the comments ha ask people to place on this triad the. This would know, be actually quite uh, quite an interesting because yeah. they offered as an advice. He was looking for advice, certain tools, certain approaches. They shared experiences, so yeah. it was very rich, in my opinion compared to the life-changing and uh, enlightening yeah. uh, <laughs> quote that I just gave as an example. So uh, there is nothing wrong with the light and a little like catchy uh, mm -hmm. type of flirting with your audience. It's, it's totally fine. But I think when this becomes the predominant in my so-called channel that all I see is this type, I get really frustrated. So yeah. Yeah, well, in fact, I, I think they, they they could have um, they could have they could still use a stream uh, somewhere in the network for this type of content, because for you know some people just like to hear nice you know catchy phrases like those, uh, and they say, okay, it made my day, it, it just inspired <laughs> me today to do whatever the, the guy said, and he's an influencer, you understand? Uh, well, he has a very important role in one of the leading companies, so I cannot say yeah, that and he's, I, I'm, uh, I'm sure he's that not that a famous person. And I've even, uh, I've even observed, uh, ob observed sorry, a post that literally contained the words. I was like, I had to Google the guy because it really intrigued me. Who can just put the word and generate 300 likes? I mean... <laughs> what is going on here? So, yes. I uh, I find that very bizarre because I don't understand. Yeah. That, that, I don't yes. understand this so-called celebrity status in the business circles. Yeah. Well, I, I find that, you know, for instance, on Twitter, I, I'm following some people that are sharing 
you know, their thoughts about design process or, you know, how to and en- to manage a team or some something like that. And and sometimes they have just, you know, uh, just a really short phrase about uh, a process and you understand it only if you know to what type of thing it relates to, you know. And um, I, I appreciate this type of content as well. I won't put some, you know, uh, two, uh, 300 light on it, but it's interesting. I wonder this example that you mentioned, a company that is trying to create this uh, alternative software for designers, would they be designing for stories or what is the underlying? Oh, yeah, well, the, well, I don't know if, for the if this person or... w- w- would, be, would agree that I share the entire project. <laughs> the idea. Ah. But I, I, can, I can, yeah, well, the idea, the pitch is that um, as designers, we exchange a lot on tools and methods on different medias, media, sorry, in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's hard to find one common place where you can, at the same time, you know, find recommendation, um, uh, how to, how to, or uh, stuff like that um, about those topics, and at the same time. Ah engage in discussion with people that are, uh, you know, known for this type of methods. And so the idea is like to combine a bit the two, like to have a space for sharing best practices, good practices and stuff like that. And engaging to conversation with people that are really, really interested into this specific method. Like you do, uh, you are a beginner in the UX research world. You want to know more about uh, user testing. You don't you don't know so much, and you you want to find one place when you can learn about it and ask questions to people that you know are subscribed as people that know knows the the the, the method. So that's the pitch, and uh, how he wants to do it is uh, <laughs> still uh, open to discussion. But we had this discussion about uh, do we do do we oriented more into a LinkedIn way of doing it? Or are we orienting more into a wiki or Quora type of platform? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah. And and that's uh, that's the way we that's the yeah, that's what, what we discussed. And I was say, I was telling him that as soon as you introduce something like LinkedIn you will necessarily fall into this cycle of this pattern of behavior that uh, that circle around you know um not necessarily celebrity but the fact that we share for the fact that we shared it you know that uh, yes. it is seen that Correct. you shared it and and it's hard to to avoid it because the 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 the, the the co- the constraints you put under the, the interaction is leads towards this type of behavior. So I, I was saying, okay, the, quite the opposite of that is a Slack channel. You know, it's the the opposite. You don't share it for the views because you have no way to measure the views. Well, maybe with the interaction, like people can say a thumbs up or something like that. But this is not really the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one will promote uh, your your share because you have like a six uh, thumbs up right <laughs> so if someone is uh, you know connecting to your slack uh, uh, one month after you shared this content it will be, be you know it will be on the top of the list and no one will see it anyway so the the the, the purpose of slack, of uh, something like slack is uh, to orient towards conversation towards exchange between people and um the question how you modulate the two is really the key the key ingredients i would say to create something that will fall in some somewhere in between the two i i feel like kura i don't know if you you know the platform uh, not well i know the name but i don't okay kura is like um uh it's like um um a, uh, ask me anything uh platform where you can register oh, as experts q with yeah. Quora. Ah, Quora. Yes. 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 Yeah. So I've, you, uh, you can go, register yourself. Yeah. Yes. As a as an expert mm-hmm. on some topics, so you can pick the topics, 
and uh, you will will uh, the platform will send you questions that people ask in the Quora ask bar uh, that you can reply to, uh, and and uh, and then it creates uh, you know knowledge um, through through the platform, which is interesting. But then you have a lot of redundancy in the type of content you can find because many people are asking the same type of questions many uh -huh. times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the Quora is has a good way to do it, but it feels like hard to find uh, a source, a common source to the subject that is discussed. Still, you know, it's hard to... I know if you type UX research, user testing, you will find, I don't know, many thousands of uh, uh, answers to this question from uh, as many people, you know? And... Um, yeah. So, well, that's the that was the discussion we had, and I feel like it's really relevant to LinkedIn. In fact, because you know you have these different channels, you have the groups, you have the the feeds, you have the uh -huh. groups, and you have the messages. And until recently, the messages was so limited that, to be honest, it was unusable. Uh, I don't know if you remember, like one year or two years ago, how was the messages? Uh, feature in LinkedIn, but it was a nightmare to use. <laughs> you could I not. I don't actually recall it, to be honest. Yeah, you 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 could hardly know to which you were. Yeah, hardly know uh, what was the last message you sent to someone. You could hardly know. Uh, you could not uh, delete a message you wrote. You could not. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could not edit it because you know sometimes you do typos, like always, like you know. Of course, yes. <laughs> you could not edit it, so you prefer to not use it uh, because it's so dangerous. You know, you can post some, you can write something you don't want to really to send <laughs> and send it anyway, <laughs> and there's no way to recover from that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Now it's better, but still it feels a bit like something aside. You know, it's not really clear how to use it. It's something in between. So there's these two aspects, and I'm sure you can do something with those principles that could land in the middle and be closer to what you are saying. Like, mm -hmm. how do you define a trend in a conversation? You know, how do, would you do this in a real conversation? Of course not. I will walk away and go talk to somebody else. I mean, I'll say nice if uh, if this was during some social drinks, and then I'll move on. I, I, but, there was but, nothing to debate. It but was they, a there will be there will be a trend for you at some point. There will be something you would remember as of course more science to yes. all the conversations you had during yeah. this event, right? Of course, the ones that I somehow. Um, have more uh, emotional connection or yeah. it triggers my curiosity or interest or resonates with whatever I'm working on. If it's, yes. uh, if it's a topic that is dear to my heart and I struggle. So, of course, I'm open yeah. to, and to I'm, I'm sure I'm sure using warm data or thick data instead of big data, because most of the algorithms today are based on big data, uh, you would get closer to this kind of feeling like you had... Mm -hmm. Your trend, yours. So th this one that speaks to you, instead of you know relating on, uh, relying, sorry, on big data, and so you have to have a big number of people, uh, you know, liking or s watching this content to tell that it's a trend. It's um, but yeah, so it's. I mean, it's surely a, a tough um, topic for, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is that most people that are handling this type of uh, problems are people from the data science field, you know. They are not designers like we generally mean it. Mm -hmm. They are designers of big data models of the algorithm <laughs> there yes. you go <laughs> and 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 and, and maybe therefore... we should write a letter to the designers of the algorithm <laughs> but there's a it is a pre... address them <laughs> sorry sorry go ahead no no the, this is what just came to mind that uh, perhaps we should uh, have a petition dear designer of the algorithm <laughs> <laughs> yes that's a good idea but that, but you know there's a pre the, those in those fields 
it's like in UX design and other type of disciplines, there are a set of predefined paddings, axioms that uh, drive the, 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 I would say, thinking side in this field. And data science is based on big data models. And I don't know how much or how many people are used to the term thick data or warm data or stories. Mm -hmm. not you know, in this field, probably. but I'm yeah. sure it's not mm -hmm. so much. You know, it's not so many people that are used to those type of approaches. And how do you merge it too? Yeah, it feels like um, it's a tough challenge. Yes, mm -hmm. but I would definitely find it really, really interesting if if we could bring, you know, those type of people discussing with. With us, in fact, we should uh, we should maybe have a debate from people from the field to hear their point of view. Perhaps yeah. uh, there are things that uh, uh, we are not considering, and we are just yes, biased, of course, of course uh, and we are not seeing the full picture. So, uh, in the context of this complexity, I would love mm -hmm. to hear from these data scientists of. Uh, Uh, what in their mind is the trend and uh, what's going on here, just to shed some light. Perhaps uh, we'll, well, uh, we'll, we'll you know, have I a must, better feelings about the algorithm. Yes, but I am sure for, for this question in most companies, for the question, what is the trend for you? The data scientists will go to the business side and will ask, please define trend and we implement it. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's my worry too. I, uh, I don't think I can blame it on the data scientists. I think it's the, it's the designer slash the community that needs to be take responsibility for the consequences of yeah. what's going on. And, and perhaps there are very valid reasons why it's so immature at this point in time. Perhaps it's... Uh, Uh, it comes with a huge cost if we want something else, but yeah. it's not transparent, and that's what bothers me. So, if, yeah. if if they have to make trade-offs, and this is the best that there is, at least be kind of like open about it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we we take it with a grain of salt and then just move on or find a better word. I mean, English language is not limited to a trend. They could have been, I don't know. So many other words that could could have been used to indicate potentially interesting content or something. I don't know. <laughs> But um, it's just that we we take shortcuts, and that's my uh, feeling that we've yes. taken uh, we. And I'm putting myself in the bucket. But typically, there are uh, we we take the easier route, and this easier route sometimes is uh, yeah comes with uh, just yeah. I agree with you. Just see how we. Reduce with uh, unwanted, uh, unwanted results, and then it's too late because now, I mean, yes. now, everyone is used to it, so yes. it, it becomes the more time it passes, unless something radical happens, it's very difficult to reverse. How, so, so how might we, how might we, <laughs> uh, nudge the system in a different direction? Right. I'm looking forward to the stories release of LinkedIn. Whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that that could be another an alter alternative, you know, alternative type of feed that yes. you could have. Yeah. As a as an experiment could be really, really interesting. Definitely. But uh, if you if you have in your network people that are coming more from the data science it would be really awesome to hear their point of view of what's going yeah. on with this algorithm and why is the algorithm so like uh, schizophrenic looking at the moment <laughs> 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 algorithm is sick we need to do something to help the algorithm <laughs> yeah well i i guess it depends on which it's always the case you know it's uh, it depends on which point of view or which perspectives you are taking into account in in defining what works well on what doesn't, you know, in your I'm point a, of view, a, in your point of view, it doesn't work, but for LinkedIn's point oh, of no, view. No, my point of view is only from the nature of the thought provoking content. I'm yes. not questioning the rest, but I'm questioning, but, but, you but agree. perhaps that's not their niche. That's why I really want to know. Yeah. Uh, where is the thought provoking platform? I'm maybe in the wrong place. So, uh, 
That's mm. all right. If, if LinkedIn doesn't want to stand for that and they have a different uh, a different value that is uh, on the top of their list, I just thought uh, for whatever reason that uh, this is the place to be. Yes. I, I try to remember the name of a platform that might might interest in, in interest you, um, which is not a trend. That for sure, <laughs> that is not a trend. That's a, a potentiality of interest for you, uh, and it's named uh, Calio or something like that. I try to find the name again. Yeah. Oh, Kia, 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 Kia. Oh, Kialo, Kialo, Kialo. Try to share the, the link with you. Uh, Kialo, Kialo, Kialo. Ah, oh, no, it's loading. Finally. Um, <clears throat> uh, what is interesting with this platform is that uh, it's, a, it's a debate platform. So I just showed you. Yeah, the, yeah okay. so it's K I A L O dot com. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to join in conversations or create your own about uh, a topic. Uh, so the only thing is that you have to come with uh, some kind of claim about the topic. Mm -hmm. So you come with a claim and you can, you know, as a group, so people can join the conversation. And as a group, you can put... Um, You can um, put um, things that uh, goes in direction of the claims or counters the so pros and cons to the claim, and so you create a conversation through in you know through claims. Once that's the the, the goal, uh, and it's really interesting because it um, it breaks down the the an the answers as. Uh, There are pros or cons, and into uh, you know trees of relationship between the the sub claims of the the main claim. So um. which, which is really interesting, and and so you, it's really collaborative. I, I used it uh, some times ago, uh, and I found it really interesting. But it's definitely not a social network. It's more, <laughs> it's it's really a debate platform. But um, huh. yeah. Okay, so for instance, there's this one: all humans should be vegan. <laughs> and so, and so, you have those pros: a vegan I'm, society. Uh, I decided to check the design thinking, and there is this debate going on. Design design thinking is an empty phrase. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Building ideation into problem solving process tends to produce more effective solutions. And then design thinking is just a new summary of design process that has been known for years. Yeah. Yeah, I will try to share my screen so people who are joining the... I just try to share my screen right now. You can see what we are discussing. So yeah, this is design thinking just an empty phrase? And see, here you have, you have the breakdown of the, of the, reply, uh, of the replies uh, to the main claim. <laughs> uh, in, in colors, depending if they are pros and cons. And you can see here that people collaborated uh, mm -hmm. to create the, this, uh, uh, you know, this shared understanding of the, of the claim, mm -hmm. which is really good. I, I feel like it's really good. But how would you categorize uh, a trend <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in this uh, situation, for instance? It would be really interesting. You know, how do you do that? It's uh, but yeah, so maybe you can find something about algorithms. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> to improve my relationship with the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know also that you you worked on on algorithms oh. at the topic with uh, your partner, um, uh, is, Diana. Uh, There is, a, I've seen a few here. If the information used to calibrate an algorithm is biased, then this bias is reproduced in the algorithm. So people, <laughs> uh, people do talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe you have to check for 
re, uh, you know, um, recommendation algorithms because yeah, this is what yeah. is the really the LinkedIn ar- algorithm based on. But yeah, so um, I don't know if the if it uh, released part of your frustration to talk about it. Uh, oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I'll get over it, and uh, I'm not abandoning LinkedIn anytime soon. <laughs> it's just that it made me it made me actually stop and think. Um, what is the point, and what kind of content I want to create? Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, for now, <laughs> I'm at peace with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any type of social network that doesn't use any algorithm to promote oh, no, no. anything. It's, I don't think it's the algorithm that's the thing. I think that. No, but I'm just so, wondering so if it, if we would work. Reason, you know? we, we just as designers we we make these choices and then it is what it is. But um, I don't so, know. So. I uh, I think your friend may be into something by wanting to create such type of platform. <laughs> the one that uh, is thinking about the design community, uh, more story-based type of conversational. Mm-hmm. Uh, because yeah. it's uh, it's interesting to to hear uh, from other people, not not so much to post the debates, but to get a different perspective. If you have a challenge, uh, to post your challenge and then see the the network what. Has the network encounter because you never would know everything, so it's really yeah. a nice and uh, surprise. You may be surprised by the recommendations and the ideas people give you, uh, and in uh, they may not even be your connections, which is the nicest thing that is possible. Because mm-hmm. if somehow the algorithm <laughs> allows other people to view that are not in the main. Uh, that are linked to somebody who commented and before you know it you have uh, different contributors in not in your direct network which is the nice thing I think I'm not giving up on uh, on LinkedIn I just wish that there would be some work done to improve that functionality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, yeah yeah Work yeah, in progress I, I guess yeah why, why would you actually you leave the um, uh, LinkedIn? What, what keeps you what keeps you stick to LinkedIn anyway? Um, I do learn a lot, so I do, but not through the so-called what is that sure. the, the daily updates. I don't go yeah, there the feeds. because the, the feeds feed. I, yeah. I find uh, super irritating. But I do scroll sometimes a lot <laughs> just yeah. to see what's going on, and every now and then I do encounter interesting content. It's not often, but. Yeah, whenever I uh, I browse, I do find interesting things, uh, and and I find uh, uh, yeah people that intrigue me, so I, I can reach out. So that's why I like it. Um, mm. It's still quite informational, uh, especially when people share different research or reports that I may not know about. So uh, I, I learn a lot. It's just that this specific feature I don't appreciate. So I think they they could be um, a way to to optimize the user experience in a sense to highlight really the valuable stuff. Um, but mm-hmm. um, I still don't know any other so-called business yeah. network. But yeah, um, it, 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 maybe uh, it's a time for something else. I it, think uh, we're yes. getting tired of uh, LinkedIn. Yes, that, that's true. That's true. Also, because uh, we had we, we were locked uh, down. Uh, so long that we that was one of the way to keep uh, to be to be updated on some part of the content we are following at, I at did notice me. that the content exploded actually since yeah. the pandemic there is so much content that it's unmanageable <clears throat> actually to stay up yes. to date but the, the fact is it, it's really hard in LinkedIn and this type of social networks like to LinkedIn and Twitter are, and Facebook are the same I have the same type of issues for that type for that matter is that it's really hard to find information outside of your predefined type of feed. So you you t- were talking about the feed, but also if you remember something you saw in the past. So let's say you saw an article about 
you saw someone sharing something about uh, an article or um, a research paper or whatever that you 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 find interesting but at the at the moment you saw it you 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 didn't took the time to say it's anywhere okay now you are two days later mm -hmm. just try to find it with yeah. the key elements you have in mind like you remember that there was this keyword and this was about this type impossible. of topic impossible. just impossible to find it google is way better than linkedin for for this type of thing and uh it's almost and, like a flipping thing whether yes, you, you either yes. see it or it's gone <laughs> yes and 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 so there's nothing that that can that can remain in the a long in long period. I also um, heard from uh, from friends in my network. Sometimes they ask me, they they see content, but like five days later, and they're like, "Oh, I just saw it." Yes. I wonder, but why five days later? Yes. Especially when I was uh, promoting an event, and they're like, "Oh, sorry, we missed it. It came five days later." <laughs> yeah, me too. This, this type of delays, I don't quite understand. Yes. What's the point? Yes, and I I, I saw there's something so that I noticed recently is that. I have like more than 500 people in my, my network in LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn promotes part of, you know, some people, but not all of them, This, you know, obviously. But the thing is that if I go visit a profile of one of the person that are in my, you know, in my uh, network, then the day after that or the following hours, um, I will see a lot of content from this person, even though it's been like weeks or months uh, that they posted it. And sometimes it's just like, huh? Like he, he the LinkedIn shared with me an event that happened like two weeks ago uh, <laughs> from this guy I barely know. I like, uh, okay, cool, but I just don't care. It's, you know, it's, it's really, I really don't care. It's not like I don't care about this guy or this content. I don't care right now because it's now irrelevant to whatever I could do with, info with this information, you know? And yeah, that's, that's really, that's part of the um, social network is I, I really don't like is finding information, keeping track or, you know, keeping a, a place for this information to stay. Some informations are, can, could be defined by the community as, you know, as you said, as relevant and therefore, you know, stay, stay somewhere in a place, yeah. like more, a place for, yes. yeah, a place for lasting things, you know, <laughs> a place for longer time, uh, term. Uh, but maybe usage. this can resolve this issue with the trend that we started the conversation with. Is, That's if true. there is a place yeah. where this so called inspirational quotes are uh, placed and I really feel down and I want that type, I can go there. Mm -hmm. If there was a more like a hashtag specific type of content that I care about, I go somewhere else. So mm -hmm. uh, I think they have the flexibility, it's just that, yeah, it's not <laughs> quite like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, <laughs> this, uh, I wish uh, we had uh, more participants in our debate about the algorithm, yes. but uh, yes. <laughs> But I, I think we can bring it bring it up uh, next time if uh, if there's no other topic that we find as sure. as interesting because uh, I I feel like with more people we can explore a bit uh, even more of the ways we could you know think about this uh, algorithm issue. Um, but yes, we yeah, it could be cool if we you, you yeah. We, you know, we have those uh, community uh, virtual chalet. Mm -hmm. uh, we could transform because some, most of the time we use this this space and time for this type of discussion as well. And uh, the only issue I have is for recording because we use Kumo and Kumo Space is <laughs> a nightmare to record anything. Uh, so if I find a way to record it with good quality of this, especially the sound, because if we record something and we barely Why don't see you it, stay on Jitsi? or you prefer Kumo for the virtual drinks and stuff? I I like Kumo for the type of in interactions and playfulness that you can find in in the platform, and the only thing that is really missing is a recording option, and I already ask them if they and want what if you record your screen 
Well, then uh, how about the sound? Uh. And that means I have to put my speakers uh, loud and the quality will be yeah. yes and, and 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 the quality will be really horrible um so yeah um have to not easy figure. not an easy, easy. <laughs> but, but 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 next time we can do it on gc and try to try to record it the 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 really first sessions were on gc at the really big at the real yeah at the beginning and i moved to kumo and it changed Really, it changed the way people interact. Really, I, I feel like. No, I like it a lot. I just uh, I forgot the recording limitation. Yeah. So. But I, I will figure out something. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, a way to do it. It's just that I have to deep, deep, you know, uh, dive in the you know, technical stuff. I don't want to <laughs> because it takes time. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you want the easy solution, uh, you have most often have to pay for it and yes. uh, and uh, <laughs> for a free community uh, it's really hard to <laughs> of course so unless, the you have, uh, unless you can use uh, the trade-off is uh, yeah. that i have to deep to dive deep uh, into some technicalities for <laughs> i totally feel you um, <laughs> i know what that is so uh, it's difficult but um well Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks, Kevin. And for this discussion, it was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see and what the others will say next time. Yes. If, uh, yes. If we're still remembering the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it will be really, really interesting to 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 continue this discussion. Um, okay. So we'll share this this discussion. We'll see if. Some people reply to it with sure. some comments or remarks or ideas. And then and next time we try to, to continue it. Yes, definitely. Cool. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. See you Bye. soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>